God bless you. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, we can do better than that. Give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Hallelujah. And I will rejoice. We will rejoice. We're all going to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, yes. Scripture says how, how good and pleasant it is for brethren and sistering <laughs> to dwell together in unity. We thank God for the, for the privilege to be in this place that he has provided so that we can give him the glory, the honor, and the praise that he alone deserves. We are grateful for all of you who are here on today. We are grateful for all of you who are viewing online. And I believe the Lord has a, a, a word for us today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, our Father the giver of every good and perfect gift. Father, it is in the name of Jesus, in the awesome and matchless name of Jesus, that we come, first of all, just saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for us being enclosed in our right mind. Thank you for us having uh, the activity of our limbs. Thank you, God, for us having a reasonable portion of health and strength. Thank you, Lord, that we woke up with shelter from the elements. Thank you, Lord, we had food to eat. Thank you, Lord. We had transportation to get here. Thank you, Lord, that our families were. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, every time I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. So, Lord, we offer hallelujahs to you on today. Oh, because you've been such a loving God. You've been such a caring God. You've been such a giving God. And thank you, you've been such a forgiving God. Oh God, because we messed up along the way. We messed up more times than we can, can remember, oh God. But you being the God that you are. Hallelujah. Slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. You didn't give us what we deserve. You gave us what we needed. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Oh God, we are in, living in a country that's in need of your grace, Lord. We're living in a country that's in need of your mercy, Lord. Have 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 mercy, Lord. Oh, God, you, you know the situation this country is in. I, I don't have to detail it to you, oh, God. Just have your way, God. Have your way in the White House. Have your way in the Senate. Have your way in the, in the Congress. Have your way, God. Have your way with every, every political official, oh God. And don't stop there. On the state level, have your way, God. On, on the city level, have your way, God. On the county level, have your way, God. In our homes, God, have your way. In our churches, have your way. In our businesses, have your way. In our schools, have your way. Have your way. We know if we yield to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We know that everything will be all right. So we thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Oh, God, we ask that you would bless the sick, bless the shut-in throughout the land and country. Oh, God, we have some members of our Tabernacle Praise Christian Church family who, are, who are, uh, uh, have been uh, affected by this COVID virus. We have some that's been affected with other sicknesses in the name of Jesus. I'm so glad I don't have to ask you to go anywhere because you're there already. So while you're there, oh, God, just have your way. Be that doctor in a sick room. Some of us are in trouble, Lord. Be that lawyer in a courtroom. Some folks are lonely today, oh God. Be that friend that's sticking closer than a brother. We thank you that everything we need, we can find in you. Oh God, I ask now that you would bless this church. Bless every member. Bless every ministry. And not just this church, oh God, but every church door that is open in your name. Because in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these. We need to hear a word from you in time like this. Hallelujah. And even when we can't see you, O oh God, we know that the sovereign God, you are taking bare business. Thank you, O oh God. So I, I'm so glad, O oh God, that we're growing up, that we can learn to trust you even when we can't trace you. So we thank you, Lord. As we move further along into this worship service, I pray, O oh God, that your spirit will continue to move in this place. So that everything that occurs today will give you glory, give you honor, and give you praise. In the awesome and matchless name of Jesus. And all who believe in the power of prayer, shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Well, again, we thank all of you for being here today, so uh, pray with me. I'm going to try and do this selection before we get into the word on today, and then we'll be ready to move forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some lonely nights Look around, and when I think things are over, oh, all of my good days, thank you, Lord, they outweigh my bad day, so I, I won't complain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes my clouds hang low. I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why so much pain? But he knows what left for me. Although my weary eyes, they cannot see. So I just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't. been good to you. He's been so good to me. More than this world could ever be. He's been good. He's been good to me. He does my tears away. Just say, thank you, Lord. Oh, I won't complain. Lord, has been good to me. Has it been good to you? Has it been good to you? He's been mighty, 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 mighty good to me. More than you of this world.
been lied on the same road. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. I think everybody can have that testimony. That we've had good days. Hallelujah. But God has been good to us. He's been good to us. I thank God for his grace. I thank him for his mercy. I thank him for his love. Oh God, I thank you for being so good. Father God, we thank you again for this opportunity to lift up your word. I ask now for clarity of mind and clarity of speech. I pray now, O God, that you would uh, just speak to me and through me, that this word might be a rhema word for every person that's listening, for those who are here in the sanctuary, for those who are viewing us online. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Recognizing God, our Father, who is first and foremost in all of our lives. Yeah. Amen. He is the one in whom we live, we move, and we have our being. Recognizing the members of clergy who are here today, uh, all of our deacons, our officers, to First Lady, to all of God's people. Amen. 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 I thank God for the privilege to stand behind this sacred desk and lift up the word of God. You know, I, I wrestled with crafting this message because I was struggling to get my mind clear enough to focus mm. because of all the chaos, all of the confusion going on right here in the good old U.S. of A. Although what we witnessed this past week was, it was really like a horrific scene from some terrorist movie. It actually goes much deeper than a riotous mob breaking in and ravaging the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. When you consider the way this anarchic and disorderly crowd was treated, in comparison to how the participants of a peaceful and orderly Black Lives Matter protest was treated last summer, I'm sure you've seen the visuals. I'm sure you've heard reports all week. This once again revealed the systemic racism that is so prevalent and deeply embedded in the United States of America. Personally, Minister Smith, I needed a word to bring me some peace in the midst of this distressing, depressing, problematic situation. So I solicit your prayers as I deliver this message entitled, Calm in the Midst of Chaos. Calm in the Midst of Chaos. Hmm. You know, while this, this country is breaking records uh, daily with the amount of people that's infected and dying from this COVID-19 virus, current totals, I looked it up as of January 8th uh, at 1351 Greenwich Mean Time, <laughs> it was 22,141,943 infected and 374,292 deaths. But you know what, surprisingly, that news has taken a back seat uh, uh, because the primary story on every ne network, I even tried to go to ESPN and find something else to look at, even the ESPN <laughs> Sports Network was talking about the siege by American citizens on the Capitol building. So as always, uh, First Lady, when I'm inundated with disturbing news, I, I seek solace from the Word of God. Because he loved me, he loved us so much that he has words of comfort during all the times of difficulty we face. Here's a good passage to read when you're seeking calm in the midst of troublesome times. From Psalms 46 and 1 and, and 2, it says, God is our refuge and our strength. He's a very, what kind of help? Present help in time of trouble. 
And then the beginning part of verse 2 said, Therefore, we will not fear. Glory to God, we will not fear. Listen to this. It, 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 in ancient cities during biblical times, uh, 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 they were often protected by large surrounding walls and imposing gates. Yeah. Plus, as there was an imminent threat uh, from their enemies, the cities, uh, uh, Beverly, would be heavily guarded, it, like the Capitol building should have been on January 6th. Inside the walls of these ancient cities, even with the impending danger on the outside, because of the protection they know that they had, it was somewhat of a safe atmosphere. Like it probably was in the Capitol building before this insurrection started. The good news for us as believers is that even when there is a threat of danger, we must always keep in mind that God is our fortress. <laughs> yeah. The Lord is our refuge. He is a constant and consistent place of refuge and safety in the times of trouble. And you know, when things like this happen, the atmosphere, the climate of uh, all around, not just in Washington, but everywhere you go, the climate gets a little tense. The climate gets a little contentious. But you know what? I don't have to be fearful because the Lord is my refuge. <laughs> he is my strength in times of trouble. You know, if we are students of the word, as we all should be, <clears throat> then we won't be surprised when trouble arises. Because I read in the word in John 16 and 33, these things have I spoken to you that in me you shall have peace. Not in government officials, not in police officers who are supposed to protect and serve, not in your financial status, not in your significant other, not in anything or anybody. Jesus says, in me you shall have peace. Glory to God. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Isn't that good news? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for that good news. <clears throat> Nowhere in the Bible does it say that we will be free from trouble. But it does encourage us to be of good cheer. Because the Lord has already overcome the world. And here's the good news. Once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have this overcoming power inside of us by virtue of the Holy Spirit coming inside to take a, a residence in us as part of the salvation package. Hallelujah. So those of us who maintain our faith in the Lord and remain focused on his promises should never be fearful of anything or anybody. Fear is a faith killer. <clears throat> because when a believer is afraid, it indicates they do not trust God enough to bring them out of their trouble. Are y'all praying with me? To act on, on our fear is to act as if the problem is bigger than the almighty God. But the truth is, we all know there's nothing too big for him. The madness that occurred in Washington this past week it was not a surprise to God, and it is certainly not too big for him to handle. Plus, we have the blessed assurance that in his own time, he's going to bring things under control. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, we have no idea why God allows some things to happen. But we do know this from Romans uh, uh, 8 and 28, and we know that all things. Somebody say all things. The good thing, the bad thing, the ugly thing. All things work together for good for those who love God. If you love God, you ought to be happy about that. To those who are called according to his purpose. Listen, we might not understand why we're going through, what we're going through, when we're going through it. But like the old gospel song says, we'll understand it better. <laughs> by and by. By and by. Praise the name of the Lord. We also know according to 1 Corinthians 14 and 33a, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. <clears throat> so we know that God is displeased with what most of us, if not all of us, witnessed on TV this week. That was total chaos, chaos. which is a condition of great disorder. Chaos is a state of habit. 
it, it's, it's discord, it's anarchy, it's lawlessness, it's mayhem, it's disruption, it's turbulence, it's, it's pandemonium. Nothing can flourish in a state of chaos. Chaos takes away our joy. Chaos takes away our peace of mind. But God is not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. He's a God of peace. So when I saw the, the insurrectionist acts incited by, by the seditious rhetoric from the lips of the President of the United States, I don't know about you, but I needed a way to tap into that peace of God. Because if the truth be told, sometimes we find ourselves thinking something. <laughs> well, 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 let me be <laughs> transparent and, and, and just talk about me. What I saw on Wednesday, and knowing who instigated the whole thing, is confession time. There were some ungodly, hmm, non-Christian, and definitely some non-pastoral thoughts <laughs> that entered my mind. Amen. But I had to dismiss them right away. Because I know that even those who do wrong, they need our prayers. Come on now, President Trump needs our prayers. Everybody in Congress needs our prayers. Come on now. You probably had a few wayward thoughts yourself. You're just too holy to admit it. <laughs> so, so, so how, how, how do we tap into that godly peace to calm us in the midst of chaos when things like this occur? I don't know about you. But I go to those victory verse collections and I find comfort every time. I go to verses that are really like Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep him in perfect peace, <laughs> Lord have mercy, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Everyone desires peace. We want peace in our mind. We want peace in our marriage and our family life. We want peace on our job. We want peace in our ministry. And we definitely want peace in our country. So God's plan is for us to experience his peace every day. Every day. John 14 and 27 says, peace I leave with you. My peace, this is Jesus talking. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Are you listening to me, saints? Neither let it be afraid. See, that's this, word, uh, uh, this world defines peace as a concept of friendship and harmony in the absence of strife or hostility or attack. It's a lack of, of conflict. Peace is a handshake between two enemies. It's a lack of trouble. It's freedom from fear and violence. So peace, listen, in the natural is based on feelings and based on circumstances being just the right way. It's conditional upon the fulfillment of certain assumptions. However, worldly peace is not permanent. Did y'all hear me? <clears throat> worldly peace is not permanent. In every situation, in every generation, there have been treaties made hopefully to ensure world peace. Yet so many times these treaties are violated and short-lived, but God has a better alternative. The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, which means calm, tranquility, serenity, harmony, wholeness, and wellness. Shalom is an, an inner sense of contentment and quietness. Here it is, regardless of feelings or circumstances. Perfect peace is internal stability. This means, listen, you can be in the midst of trouble and still have peace. <laughs> Lord, perfect peace is irrelevant to the chaos around you. Perfect peace is calmness and reassurance in the midst of conflict. Perfect peace is not the absence of a storm, but rather it is the ability to remain calm in spite of a seemingly hopeless situation. It is the calm of mind and heart that isn't shaken by adversity. Perfect peace is to be joyful in the midst of an unhappy situation. Listen to me now. It's not a trouble-free life. Perfect peace is serenity in the midst of difficulties. Because perfect peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what it says in Philippians 4 and 7. 
It says, and the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So how can we stay calm when there seems to be turmoil all around? In a world with brokenness seemingly all around us, how can we find stability? How do you keep calm, Sister Rosie, when things are not going your way, the way you want them to go? Well, let me briefly expound upon, upon eight ways with associated scripture references to assist you in remaining calm and peaceful even in the midst of chaos and confusion. The first thing, you need to seek peace with God. Yeah. Seek peace with God. I, I, I got some sermon notes that I, I send out. I may just go, uh, when I leave here, just send them out so everybody can have those to look at. Amen. See, sin causes us to be at enmity with God. Look, but look, uh, uh, God, uh, but, but we know that we are not to be at enmity with God, but the blood of righteousness of Christ brings us peace with him. It is therefore important that we seek peace with God. And that begins when we enter a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Then we can reap the benefits of that relationship. Here's one of the benefits of that relationship that we don't often think about. Proverbs 16 and 7 says, When a man ways please God, listen to me, he even makes his enemies be at peace with him. Glory to God. I, I, I sound like a perk I need. That sounds like a benefit I need. Glory to God. Let me go to number two. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Now, y'all know that every time I think of the goodness of Jesus, my soul cries out, hallelujah, I get happy. Psalm 103 and 2 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. See, God knows our tendency to forget. And this is why he is adamant that we should uh, intentionally remember his goodness. It's good for us to look back and yeah. praise God for his presence. Yeah. Praise God for his power. Yeah. Praise God for his provision. Yeah. Praise God for the people that he's put in our lives. When we're going through something, they can lift us up with a word or, or prayer. Praise God. When we remember God's goodness, it helps us to overcome fear and any other negative emotion. I'm telling you, reflection refuels thanksgiving. It, it, it fuels praise and worship. So spend some time reflecting on God's goodness. Psalm 77, verses 11 and 12 says, I will remember the work of the Lord. Surely, I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. Hallelujah. <coughs> Here go number three. Take it to God in prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Songwriters say, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. It, it, it's, it's my belief that until you cast all your burdens on the Lord, you won't experience perfect peace. Because you're trying to do things yourself. You're trying to handle things on your own. Prayer will help you keep your mind on God and fill your thoughts with his peace. Listen to what it says in Psalms 18 and 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. In my distress. Uh, look, and I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry reached his ears. Hallelujah. So we got to learn to take everything. Somebody say everything. Everything to God in prayer. Then pray without ceasing, and let the peace of God reign in your heart. Look, there's another passage, and I, I don't think I sent this in because the Lord just gave me this when I was doing my last-minute edit this morning, so you won't find this one in there, David. Psalms 34 and 17 says that the righteous cry out, righteous folk, wave at me, wave at me. Yeah. Come on, if you're at home looking, wave it, wave at the camera, wave at me. Wait. When the righteous cry out, the Lord hears. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he doesn't just listen and feel sorry for you. He delivers them out of all their troubles. Hallelujah. Come on, that's a good place to give God praise. Come on, give him praise. <coughs> Number four, study and meditate on the word of God. Don't just read through it. 
Don't just skim through it like you do a Ebony magazine. Come on, study. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, you all know what's going there. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's an operative word, rightly, because if the word can be rightly divided, it can be wrongly divided. So if you study it for yourself, then you won't be turned away by somebody who says something that sounds right. You won't be turned away by somebody that somebody says something that makes you feel good. When you study it for yourself, you'll know that you know that you know that you know. God wants us to fill our hearts constantly with his word. So when a crisis comes up, when trouble comes and it's coming, God wants his word to be so deeply rooted and firmly established in our hearts that we automatically react to what his word says instead of reacting with fear or some other negative emotion. This is where that victory verse collection that I told you to compile, this is where it's going to come in handy. Number five, as I move on, guard your hearts. Guard your hearts. Listen, Proverbs 4 and 23 says, guard your hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know what? We often relinquish the peace that God has given us by the words that come out of our own mouths. When, when we get stressed, we say some things that, that, that not, nowhere close to Scripture. Nowhere close to what God desires for us. It, look, so, so we, in other words, we speak death into our own situation. So we got to learn to control our tongues. Amen? In, in other words, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. You'll never enjoy perfect peace unless you learn to control your tongue. And in order to control your tongue, you need to guard what comes into your mind and your heart because that's uh, eventually what you're going to start to believe and talk about. Listen to me. Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Don't send me any letters. Don't call me with this. But too much CNN. Too, too much MSNBC. Too, too, too much Fox News. Uh, look. It, it's not good. Listen, I, I am not saying don't get the information, be informed. Because we need to be informed. But too much. Somebody said too much. too much. Come on, that's not good for you. Because you, whatever you feed into your mind determines what's going to be in the forefront of your mind. And you'll believe it. It will eventually control how you feel. Come on now. And, and how you act. So listen, listen to me good now. So if your heart is always troubled, if it's always full of worry or fear and doubt, it could possibly mean that you're feeding it too much of the wrong stuff. Come on, are you, come on, keep saying amen to me, somebody. Conversely, if your heart is full of the word, your tongue will constantly speak it, and your life will manifest what you are speaking. Praise the Lord. Here we go, number six. Place your trust in God. Even when you don't understand why God has allowed certain challenges in your life, you can trust his love and you can trust his purpose. So we got to learn to shift our focus away from our circumstances because God is bigger than any challenge we face and he's able to help us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In how many of your ways? All your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. As an old gospel song we used to sing, I might have been back in Mount Pisgah when we uh, you said, so I'm going to keep on trusting. I know his word is true because he's already done what he said it would do. Here is number seven. Get rid of bitterness. Get rid of bitterness. This is going to help keep you calm. Refuse to hold on to anger and resentment. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. We got to flush out the poison of bitterness. Choose to forgive as an act of your will. Listen, despite your feelings. Y'all should remember this from the Gift of Forgiveness Bible study series we just recently completed. Trust God to bring you about justice rather than wasting your time trying to get revenge because a vengeful attitude is a cancer of the mind. Mm. It destroys joy. It destroys peace. 
So be willing to pray for the people you are forgiving, even if they haven't asked for it. Mm, that's an act of love. Enjoy the freedom that forgiveness gives. And finally, number eight, don't give up. Don't give up. Remember that God is not done with us yet. He's not done with us yet. Be patient and wait on God to complete his good work in you. Philippians 1 and 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, saints. In this world, you're going to have troubles. You might be even in a situation right now where everything around you seems to be falling apart. Sometimes the challenges of life uh, is like a turbulent storm that tosses us to and fro that we never expected. But God doesn't want us to live a life that's stressful all the time. He wants us to live a life of rest and, and peace. It is the will of God that we stand firm in faith as we navigate through the storm. Through the storm. So we should never be afraid, agitated, intimidated when trouble comes because God is our rock. God is our refuge. He is our strength. And he is our shield. And with him by our side, we will make it through anything that we encounter. So stand firm. Be still. Be at peace. When you're at peace, you're displaying your unconditional faith in God. If you focus on God, you won't be overwhelmed by circumstances. I didn't say you wouldn't be concerned because we should be concerned but we won't be overwhelmed. The mind that has stayed on Jesus, it can be calm even in the midst of chaos. Let me close it up with this uh, analogy. In an effort to help, help you better understand the tremendous transformation that we undergo when we commit our lives to Christ. Imagine that before knowing and coming to Jesus Christ that you were like a caterpillar. But after inviting him into your life as your Lord and Savior, you transform into a beautiful butterfly. So, so now that you are a Christian, do you act like the new creature that you have become? Or do you sometimes grovel along the ground like a caterpillar instead of soaring like a butterfly? Imagine seeing a beautiful, graceful butterfly groveling on the ground amidst the dirt and the leaves, feeding as a caterpillar feeds, seeing as a caterpillar sees only what's in front of them, not able to soar above their circumstances. You know what? That would be living far beneath the potential that God desires for us. I need to let you know now that accepting Christ, don't miss this, does not exempt us from experiencing hardships. It does not exempt us from having sorrows, but it, it look, but walking with Jesus won't transform our lives into a carefree protection. In fact, listen, our butterfly wings may even become bruised and sometimes broken during our travels, but as Christians, we are forever transformed and we can be healed and delivered even after we've been broken. Hallelujah. It is our job to remember that we are new creatures in Christ. So we got to act like the creatures that we are. Our actions may not always reflect the transformation that God has promised. So he has given us a standard for our actions that we can find in his word. You know the phrase, what would Jesus do? It became a trendy slogan just a few years ago. But, but giving it some serious thought, it's actually a, a life-altering question. It asks the simple yet profound question, are my actions Christ-like? Our growth and strength in Christ is measured by what we do much more than what we say. So what do your actions say about you? And more importantly, what does God expect of our actions? In his word, he provides a, a remarkable guide for transforming our actions. Here are five steps, five steps. That, that, that reflect transformation. Number one, act with thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 said, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
Number two, act with the knowledge that God is with you. Matthew 28 and 20b says, Lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Since I know God is with me, I understand it ain't no stopping me. I know he's with me. Number three, act with the knowledge that God will. God will, God will what? Hebrews 13 and 21. Strengthen you and make you what you ought to be. And equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will. Number four, act like an overcomer. Romans 8 and 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Act like what hasn't happened has happened. So what hasn't happened can happen. See, I can walk around with a Holy Ghost swagger because I know I'm a winner. And here it is, number five. Act like a victorious Christian. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I should never display a defeatist mentality because God has given me victory that nobody can take away. Nobody can take away. So by continually seeking God, studying and applying his word in every situation, we will experience a transformation in our action. Then when our action consistently become more Christ-like. We grow stronger in faith, we become closer to God, and we learn to soar above every circumstance that comes our way, listen, even in the midst of chaos and confusion. Hallelujah, if you believe that word, come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. It is always my prayer that through the ministry of song, and the ministry of the spoken word, we all have received something here today that will strengthen us in our spiritual walk. Hallelujah. I praise God for his word. I thank you for allowing to use me as a vessel to speak a word of joy and peace and inspiration and calm to his people. Invitation to discipleship is now extended. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you're already a Christian and you want to become a member of the Tabernacle of Praise, a Christian church, a local, remote, or honorary member, we ask that you send your contact information and or any question you might have about our ministry to labhill60 at gmail.com. Or you can text it to 901-319-5588. Again, thanks to all of our top partners and friends for your continued financial support. For others who might desire to support us financially, these are the methods by which you can give. You can text TOP, T-O-P, to 77977 and then follow the prompts. You can also download the TOP app from the Apple Store for iPhone users or from the Google Play Store for Android users. Then click on the giving icon at the bottom of the screen and then follow the prompts. And finally, you can mail your contributions to TOP, 4325 Hacks Cross Road, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. For those who are new to us who are viewing us for the first time online, we invite you to join us for our Wednesday power-up service, and that's from 5.30 to 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we also have a Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, also on, on Wednesday. You can join us by dialing in 732-434-2918. Again, 732-434-2918. And it's recommended you dial in at least about 10 minutes prior to each service to ensure connection. Again, uh, thanks all of you for being here. And as I mentioned previously, uh, it's my prayer that through the ministry of song and the ministry of the spoken word, we all have received something here today to strengthen us in our spiritual walk. Hallelujah. Won't you stand for the benediction? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From Philippians 4 and 7, may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus until we can meet again. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. You're not dismissed. Until next week, this is Pastor Nate said, be blessed and be safe. Hallelujah.